It's the next level. Thank you. This is the place where the TVA dumps its rubbish. Everything they prune. And Elias, he ensures none of it ever returns. It's a living tempest that consumes matter and energy. They send entire branched realities here that are devoured in an instant. We're in a shark tank. Lyoth is the shark. Oh, there's no such thing as an alligator tank. Besides, it's a better metaphor. He's overly sensitive like the rest of us. Hang on. You're telling me that thing's a Loki too? Oh, yes. Okay. Fine. Willing to accept that. Why are there so many of you? Because Loki survive. That's just what we do. Great. So how do we escape? We do Hey panelers, welcome back to the show, I'm Mark. And I'm Steve. And this is going to be a spoilerful episode, or podcast, about the fifth episode of Marvel's Loki. And we're covering Loki Season 1, Episode 5, Journey into Mystery. And the synopsis for this particular episode is, Loki tries to escape the Void, a desolate purgatory where he meets variant versions of himself. And, wow. Yeah. <laughs> uh, we're, we're just going to move right along, go right into our initial thoughts. And Steve, what were your initial thoughts? Well, you know, everything was a lot of setup for, for the final episode, but I, I did love seeing all the different the different Lokis. I wasn't disappointed at all by it. It was There was a lot of exposition. There was a lot of talk, um, but there was also a lot of action. And when I read the synopsis at first, before I actually watched the episode, I was kind of, I thought I was going to be disappointed because I thought we were going to get nothing in the TVA. So I was really excited when we started with, right at the beginning in the TVA. And, uh, you know, I can't wait for that final episode. I'm excited. Um, I, I watched a, a few YouTube videos because there were so many Easter eggs in oh, this yeah. one, uh, that I'm not, I can't even try to, to fit them all in or, or talk about all of them. But I encourage you guys, if, if you're interested in that, uh, go out there, find some YouTube videos, and and check out all the the little Easter eggs. I'm sure we're going to talk about some of them as we go through our, our uh, discussion points. Oh yes, definitely. I, I and I actually caught a lot of those Easter eggs myself. And me being the fanboy that I am, I actually had a ton of conversations throughout the day yesterday when it came out, and I was so happy to talk about them. I really wanted to get into it and. Yeah, th this this episode, I think, is one of my favorites. I really enjoyed this one. We got multiple versions of Loki. We get to see how Loki has to deal with himself multiple times mm -hmm. <laughs> throughout the episode. I really enjoyed it. We get to see Sylvie. We get Mobius back, which I'm so grateful for. Interaction between Mobius and Sylvie. Then we get to see a lot of Loki's working together and come together at this point. Whereas last week when we were talking about last week's episode, I had mentioned that, you know, there were factions of Loki and we do get factions of Loki in this. But it's so funny how, you know, they really can't really work together because they are too much alike. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but I really enjoyed this episode. I really had fun with this. My favorite is classic Loki and uh, kid Loki too. Yeah. And, uh, oh, definitely alligator Loki as we get to it. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, enough of that. You know, just me fanboying and having a good time because there's so much Loki within this episode. We have to get really right into the nitty gritty and we have to jump right into what we like to call our top five. Thank you, my friend. You're my favorite. So I, I guess I'll start since sure. uh, you started last week. Yeah. So my number five would be all five Lokis talking about their past, where they were from, what their Nexus event was, and I, I just love the bickering and stories they had. It seems like Kid Loki is in charge of that little team that they have, and I love the alligator 
<laughs> and the story about uh, him eating the neighbor's cat. <laughs> and that's what really sparked, I guess, the Nexus event. And then the, the scuffle with uh, President Loki and all of them fighting together because they all just can't get along in some way. And everybody's scheming on each other within that. And you find that out within that particular scene. I love the fact that the alligator bit off the hand of who I call or like to call President Loki. And the look on his face and how much he reacted. It was so awesome to see that. Yeah, it was it was great. I had that in my in my notes uh, that it reminded me of Captain Hook from Peter Pan. You know, yes. you his, so. <laughs> Somebody needed a, a watcher uh, or some sort of clock chiming in at yeah. that time, you know. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Uh, so my number five is just that that kind of opening scene where we get the way the camera kind of moves and it, it tilts and it's kind of spins uh, through the TVA and ends up in the void. You know, it, it tilted in the upside down as it went through, went past that timekeeper's head. And we saw that red glow on things. It's kind of like we we come to to put that with magical kind of stuff. So I didn't notice it last week, but I guess it was probably there last week as well, that little red kind of glowish around things so it's be interesting to see if they explain that or if they just leave that uh that to us but i just love that in like you're going to talk about some of them i think uh the easter eggs as that that shot is painting in bringing us into the void there's some some cool easter eggs in that moment as well oh most definitely uh i have a ton and we'll talk about that within my notes i really don't want to divulge that within yeah. our top fives but there is so much that are like comic book Easter eggs, uh, I kind of misled myself in my predictions of who it is that's behind the TVA. Mm -hmm. Also, I, I just love the idea that if you think about it, it's almost like a Wizard of Oz kind of story in mm -hmm. a sense of what we're, you know, we don't know who's behind this curtain, you know? Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, I, I really enjoyed it. And like I said, yeah, that you already hit it on the head with all the Easter eggs because this episode had so many and so many reflections within the MCU as well as within the comic books themselves. So that's my little bit on that. I'll go into my number four, which would be Mobius and Sylvie's working together. You know, the fact that Mobius picks her up in the car when Mobius was after her, literally was in, you know, chasing after her. And he's like, get in the car, get in the car. And I just love that Mobius, you know, has some sort of attachment to these particular, particular two Lokis. You know, you got Sylvie and you got the Loki that we follow. But I just love that both Sylvie and Loki, as they are talking, are not sure how to get about their feelings with one another. You know, both Loki and Sylvie are not sure of, you know, how they feel being together or where they are. And, you know, you have that those cool scenes within it. They talk about after everything is done with, with the actual TVI itself. But Loki comes to grip with his uh, treasonous ways and he says he wouldn't do that to Sylvie, you know, because he let down so many that he loved or cared about that were close to him, like Thor, his father, his mother people he's worked with and he's not that person anymore yeah yeah i wouldn't do that to you then sylvie says that they have to find him a place to rule and just joke about it so it shows the heart and the, the warmth within this and i really enjoyed that and it makes me think yeah something's gonna happen between these two something's gonna happen between loki and sylvie to bring them together where it's gonna create some sort of new major nexus event yeah, possibly. Uh, I had a little bit of this in my notes as well, because the only, one of the things that confused me about the episode, and it's not really a criticism, it's just one of these things that I'm just kind of like, is how did everybody know when and where other people were going to show up? Mm. Because it's like those, you know, the four Lokis are are right there when Loki falls out of the sky and, and hits the ground. Yeah. And Mobius doesn't even see, he couldn't even see Sylvie. She had to break out of that school bus. Yes. But yet he knew exactly where she was and exactly when she arrived because he got there to pick her up in the car. Yeah, it must be some sort of big flash moment that attracts Maybe. them. Well, Maybe. But yeah, and on top of that, though, you got Kid Loki, you got Boisterous Loki, and then you got Classic Loki that finds our Loki. And they were kind of aware that he showed up. That's what I'm saying. That's what That's what they didn't. There's really no – I'm sure we're not going to get an explanation because it, it, it's not a big enough point for us to require an explanation. It just was one of the things that bothered me was how did all these people just know 
where and when to show up because obviously people don't show up at the same place at because the same Loki, time. Lo, well, Loki and Sylvie were in two different places when exactly. they appeared, you know. So that was that was just one of the things, and I just wanted to because you talked a little bit about the whole Mobius and Sylvie thing and Sylvie and Loki because I had this that conversation between Sylvie and Loki was one of my my notes as well. So I just wanted to get that in there. Yeah. So my number four is I want to talk a little bit about Renslayer because you know she had me fooled, man. I I bought it that she was that she was wanting to align herself with Sylvie. I yeah. didn't I didn't pick up until you know until the show kind of showed it to us until Sylvie realized it that she was just stalling for time while the Minutemen came. And I also didn't notice until one of the YouTube videos I watched mentioned it that she had Renslayer's Tim pad when she pruned herself. And of course, in the second watch, I actually heard the line where Renslayer says she stole my Tim pad. I didn't hear that either. I, I kind of caught that only at that moment at that time on the second viewing. Yeah. And yeah, it's weird too. I, I was like, wait a minute. When did she prune herself? We didn't really see it. So yeah. there was a lot of cut scenes at this point where we don't see it. Yeah, and this one, I really wanted a third watch on this one, but I know we want to get this podcast out. So I really, but you do see her, like I said, there's that line, there's a the spoken line from Rinslayer where she says she stole my Tim pad. Yeah. And then we see her actually stand up because the, the Minutemen kind of brace themselves for an attack and then she prunes herself. So again, it was one of those things with Rinslayer that I was kind of confused as far as how much she knows about what's really going on. She seems surprised that the timekeepers were robots. Yes. But then she's kind of stalling there. But then at the end, she asks Miss Minutes to get her all the files, <laughs> the creation of the TVA. So she, you know, we wouldn't need that. That scene is all that, that gives us the knowledge that she really doesn't know what's no, going on. No, she and doesn't. She, yeah. And she wants to find out. Yeah. And it's like a void ship too, that she was looking for. <laughs> No, that was a that was a bluff, Mark. I know there, that. I know that was, was no, a, there was no, no time. There's, there's and, no and, void ship. And, no, I I know, and that's what really what Sylvie knew, and that's why she was like really attacking uh, Red Slayer about. Yeah, and it's, I it's really like enjoyed it. It's like in poker, overplaying in your hand a little bit there. You know, uh, we got a void. We have a void. You know, Miss Minutes is the one who brought it up. She says, "Well, what about the void spacecraft?" And Rinsler goes, "The prototype." You know, that you means know, that like, Miss Minutes was involved <laughs> with it too. Yeah, that's what it was. It was great because we, we know that Miss Minutes can interact, and so she came up with that bluff kind of on the fly. So it also makes me wonder if Miss Minutes might be being controlled by. Who's ever actually controlling the TVA? You see, Same here. She, she pulled that bluff out. So yeah, yeah, and it, it's such a whole working disguise. Yeah. So I'm curious to see who's behind that curtain. I really do. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, uh, that leads me to my number three, and that would be the moment that Loki starts his journey. You know, his goodbye to Mobius to uh, yeah, and stating that he is his friend. Such an, an emotional, heart-wrenching moment that we get between Loki and Mobius. And I really enjoyed that for the fact that it's like the first time you're actually starting to see this particular Loki. Yeah, mind you, it's the Loki from, what was it, the first Avengers. And mm -hmm. then he had to see his whole life change. And he had to go through all these perils and all these things within this particular show. And he comes to a point where he really found somebody who he cares about a, a friend and he thought he lost him at one point just like in the last episode and now he's you know he's having to say goodbye and give him that hug yeah and i just had all the feels within it and then mobius whispers to sylvie saying <laughs> that she is his favorite which i'm like dying over because i love yeah. it so showing that you know mobius does care about the both of them even though yeah. he said what you said last podcast, we were talking about, you know, it's like he he couldn't fathom and how it, it created such a uh, a spark within or a nexus event that yeah. way, you know. Yeah, you guys didn't want to know it. <laughs> I thought it was great, and I really, I really wish we had seen or got a, a quick shot of Loki's face when he said that, because the way Mobius says it, he could almost be like whispering it in Loki's ear, yeah. but he's got eye contact with Sylvie. So they're both thinking that they're his favorite. You know? <laughs> exactly. Like, like, so <laughs> I caught that on the second watch. I was like, 
he's whispering it, but he's making he's definitely making eye contact with Sylvie. So yeah, yeah. that was that was a great moment. I loved it. You know who uh, it was directed to, and it's like, wow. oh yeah, <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, it was great. I loved it. My number three is something that dawned on me as I was watching some YouTube videos this afternoon mm-hmm. that. Sylvie, as far as we know, and as far as Loki found out, is the only female variant of Loki. Yes. You know, we see a Loki variant played by Tom Hiddleston in this one, the, the, your, the president Loki. All the other Lokis are played by different actors. When the TVA showed us, you know, that kind of revolving list of variant Lokis, there were several of them mm-hmm. that matched appearance with, with Tom Hiddleston, you know, that Tom Hiddleston was obviously playing, but... We only have the one female variant. So I, I thought that was just an interesting point to bring up because I hadn't heard anybody else say that yet. Yeah, same here. I really do enjoy Sylvie, and I'm hoping mm-hmm. that she stays through the MCU. I hope they do bring her into the MCU itself, too. And yeah. not just her alone. I'm, I'm thinking like almost like a power couple, you know, mm-hmm. between her and regular Loki that we are following. And during within that fight scene, too, we do get the other Lokis that we saw that were pruned at one point, very much like the Hulk Loki, he does make an appearance within there. You just don't see him. You right. literally have to pause it to see everything that's going on within that fight scene, yeah. especially when they all uh, attack on each other, you know, and especially when President Loki going, what? You're all against me? What is this? And yeah. it was double cross upon double cross upon double cross. And that's what led to that fight. So, yeah. Yeah. And she is the only female Loki, as you state. So I really enjoy that. And I do enjoy the actress that does play Sylvie, as yeah. it were. Uh, actually, there there's a cool thing, too. I, I don't know if you had seen it. I'm forgetting the actress's name. DiMartino, Sofia DiMartino. Yeah, Sofia DiMartino. Martino. Yeah. If you look on, uh, I think it's under Disney Marvel's Instagram, she had posted something literally the day of. Oh, nice. And literally she, the costume designers, because she was breastfeeding, they created a costume for her to unzip properly huh. so she can nurse her child. And think about that. With all the action that was going on, when all these episodes that she's been going on, she's been breastfeeding her child or nursing her child at that time. She yeah. recently had a child during this. So they made it easy for her to uh, nurse her child while she was on set every day. And it was like a big thank you to them. So that's a lot. And if you look at a lot of what the stunts that she had to do, that running towards Mobius... That was her. You could see it. And I'm sorry. Credit to her for, like, doing all that stunt work and Mm -hmm. then having to do all that work, acting, and then, oh, hold on. I got to take care of my child now. (laughs) And then, you know, unzip and you can go from there. Yeah. Yeah. Credit to her. And, you know, we got to thank her just for the effort that she did because during this time, it's been crazy. And they kind of rushed a lot of these episodes. And I think that's where we're missing a lot. And... That's where a lot of the exposition is. And honestly, in my opinion, it should have been at least 10 episodes. But, you know, they made do with what they had. And I think the big outcome that they were waiting or relying on was for this episode and the last episode. So I think, you know, that's where it lies. The, these, this episode that we just watched and then the, the last in finale is going to be the one to really drive it home. There was a couple of other episodes, obviously the first episode and I think the third episode where I really, really enjoyed, but uh, I can understand it when we were talking, when we were mentioning, or I mentioned Jason last week, not having much interest in it because there's so much exposition, but they had to fill so much in such a small time frame that it's so hard with this show that we have to, uh, like pretty much, you know, eat up everything that the uh, the characters are creating or mm-hmm. how they are and who they are and then where they fit in this role. So now we got to that point where it jumps so hard into the last two episodes. And now we, we're at where we're at. And, you know, that's why I come to the reasoning of, hey, they should have at least gave us two more episodes just to support that exposition or build up of character, you know. That, that's my only complaint about the show is that it should have been a little bit longer. With Falcon and the Winter Soldier, how long did we have for those episodes? We had, what, eight? No, there was only six. Six? Just I the think, same? Yeah, just the same. Yeah, it was the same. All right. But with, with this, it seems like they kind of rushed it. And I think due to filming and everything that was going on within the world, I'm not going to say the word. 
but uh, I, I think they kind of pushed it, and they had these stories pretty much screenplayed, and they had only X amount of uh, hours for particular episodes, so they had a cut, and I, I'm wondering if there's going to be a uh, pretty much like a, a director's cut of these particular shows. It would be nice if we got them. I don't think Disney Plus or, or Marvel would actually do that, but I really think it has to do with the uh, the time frame that they had to deal to get all these stories out. Because y- y- you and I already mentioned it before we started recording, What If is coming out in August. So they're really pushing to get all this stuff out mm-hmm. there so we could see it. And then they want to run into it. And then as we're talking now, within like, you know, this is what, Thursday, uh, a little after 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, it's literally, you know, you're going to have Black Widow launching and we're getting the MCU back and we're going to have a lot of movies coming out. You know, we got Black Widow come December. We're going to get Spider-Man, No Way Home and a whole bunch of other movies. And I think they really want to launch this so that way we could get everything we needed to. I think uh, the whole pandemic and everything really put, you know, a foot in everything where, you know, they, they had to rush it. And, you know, we, we were entertained. I'm definitely entertained. I don't know about you, but I've, yeah, I've no. been happy about this. I, I've liked them all. They're great. Yeah, they're, they're great. Now, mind you, is this the best out of the three that we got from Disney Plus? I don't think so. But in respect, was I entertained? Yes, I was. I, I think uh, there was a lot of exposition in it. And, you know, I think if they were able to extend it to make it two more episodes, same thing with Falcon and Winter Soldier, and there was stuff that was cut from Falcon and Winter Soldier, and we talked about that. I think they could have at least gotten away with two more episodes just to fill it out if they left in a lot of the cut scenes, and that way we don't have to worry about that, and then there was a little bit, you know, there'll be a little bit more understanding. But those are my thoughts, and I digressed. <laughs> yeah. All right, we're at your number two. My number two? Yes. Okay, that would be the enchantment and distraction with both Loki and Sylvie to Elias. And they're trying to get past him to get to the other side, because I love how Sylvie goes, oh, you just want to take down Elias. You want to destroy it? And go. he goes, yes. Oh, you're going to follow him? And they're like, yeah, it seems right at the moment. <laughs> and it's like, <laughs> no. I just love the idea of Loki's fiery dagger, even though they already talked about within the episode saying how daggers are pretty much too boisterous. When they all got together, you got classic Loki, boisterous Loki and kid Loki, and they, they talked about daggers and how, you know, it's like, oh, what what do you mean? Yeah. Uh, it kind of, you know, it, it slows us down. You don't need that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, the, uh, I, I talked about the fiery dagger, but then we, we get classic Loki helping out with his own distraction with the illusion of a city or Asgard, as it were, for Elias to attack. And I really enjoyed that scene so much because classic Loki looks something straight out of the comic book. It's very much like what we got vision, like with vision during the Halloween scene during, uh, WandaVision. Right. And it was like, perfect it looked exactly like the loki but he was older and we found out a a lot of his past within it and i really enjoyed that he talks about how after the snap he kind of left himself on some sort of planet or something and hit himself no no not after the snap after thanos killed him after because remember he made an illusion of himself yes right that's right yeah thanos killed an illusion of himself so he died in that in that timeline Mm -hmm. just like the like our loki did you know, and then he went and lived, you know, kind of ostracized himself, basically. And so the TVA didn't bother with him because he wasn't interacting with anybody. He wasn't causing any Nexus events until he stepped out of that or attempted to step out of that uh, that self. Ostracization. Sort, yeah, ostracization. Yeah, or yeah, whatever. Whatever. <laughs> yeah. 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 That was when the TVA grabbed him. Yeah, definitely. And I really enjoyed that story because it showed a lot of heart, even from that character itself. Yeah. But also within the scene that he's doing that and he's helping both Sylvie and Loki, that was a lot of power. And as we know, when they talked about at the very end saying a lot of power when many Lokis come together within the void when they work together. And I thought that was amazing. And that was a lot of power coming from one particular Loki to help out two others. Right. You know, we didn't really see much more of kid Loki, boisterous Loki or alligator Loki (laughs) at that point. But the thing is, is that they were all working together. And I really enjoyed that for that fact. 
I loved the music that was within that too. You know, mm-hmm. you got the Ride of the Valkyries. It was like a version of that. Yeah. And it was so present. And I'm like, wait, I know that music. I know that, I know that song. And it was Ride of the Valkyries. And I'm like, oh man, it's so good. And I really enjoyed that scene, not just because of the music, but also because of the visuals within it. This was actually my number one as well, was the the enchanting of Ali. Ali I can't even say that guy's name. Uh, Ali. Because I love the fact that, that you talked about classic Loki and the fact that he's had, he had lived, he lived long enough to know how powerful he was. And so he's, you know, he see him building up all those different versions of Asgard and Ali just kind of eats them. And that's what triggers Sylvie and Loki to know that, wait a minute, we're way more powerful than, than we actually think we are. Just like you were talking about. And I still have to go back and rewatch the scene with the building with yeah. whichever one of them it was that rebuilt that building. Yeah. They didn't even realize, I think, what they had done and how powerful they really are. And so when they combined their, the two of them combined their forces, they were able to uh, enchant Ali and uh, that's all I'm going to, I'm not, I can't say it. I'm not going to do it. I was like, Ali, it's like Muhammad Ali was here. (laughs) Uh, No, but it just, it just was great the way they saw how powerful he was and that let them know how powerful they were. And even Loki, when he says, well, I don't know how to enchant. And she says, yes, you do. You're just like me. Oh, wow. I, I loved it. It was a great. Yeah. yeah. So what's your number one? Well, my number one, that would be the final scene. You know, classic Loki sacrificing himself to Elioth. But with Sylvie and Loki together, they were able to break through Elioth and see where to go beyond. Pretty much a cliffhanger, yes, but something to be expected because this is the penultimate episode of the season or uh, show, as it were. Right. And I really enjoyed it. But I was expecting that to, com- you know, completely. I knew that was going to happen. So a lot's going to happen at the very end. So we do get to see in the next episode who's behind that curtain. You know, yeah. the wizard behind the curtain at the end, just like in The Wizard of Oz. And there's a lot of Oz references within the movie or show itself or this episode. So my number one is, it, we've kind of already talked about it, but I want to focus in a little bit more on on just a, some points about classic Loki and kid Loki. Because one of the things we find out in here is when we see present Loki, you talked about the fact that they all turned on each other, basically. I mean, even boisterous Loki turned on kid Loki. Yeah. And he says, you know, he tells him, I was the one who betrayed you. And so we have, but kid Loki and classic Loki really are the only ones that seem to have like grown and matured. And even kid Loki, he says something like to the effect, whenever we try to fix ourselves, that's when the TVA would show up because we're not supposed to be redeemed. We're not supposed to get yes. this kind of, you know, growth and, or and a second maturity. chance. Yeah, or a second chance. And so it was great to see that those two had kind of a, a, a trust between each other. And like you said, we didn't see where he and Alligator Loki were there at the end when Classic Loki shows up to give his distraction. Mm-hmm. But I think, you know, for story-wise, we needed to have Classic Loki kind of by himself doing that just to show how powerful even one Loki by themselves is. And so I think it was – and to see his sacrifice – as well was was really great when we had that moment and we had the same kind of partnership that, that Loki and Sylvie have now developed. And I hope, you know, I hope this doesn't turn into a backstabbing kind of thing where in yeah. the last episode she turns on him or he turns on her and just, you know, lied about not doing that to each other. So I, I really hope they they stay on this kind of partnership kind of level or even if it develops a romance, which would be kind of weird, but still. <laughs> the Mobius you know. will cringe. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. So that really was, and I, I changed that kind of my, to my number, my number one, because uh, we had uh, talked about the enchantment already. Oh, we also had that moment with Sylvie and Loki when Loki has the, the blanket and he extends mm-hmm. it just to extend his gratitude towards her and his warmth for her. They had yeah. that one moment, which was really amazing. It was him basically coming to terms with himself and, you know, she even stated, and I think he even mentions it within the scene saying that he will always be alone and that's his fear and it's him conquering his fear and it's not more or less of more of being in love, but having something or someone to rely on. And I think that's where Mobius falls into place with this for the fact Mm -hmm. that he has a friend. 
somebody who he hugged and he goes, you are my friend. Yeah. And then when uh, Mobius was able to leave at that point, because he had that temp pad and was able to move on, which is amazing. He was able to get out of the void. Now Loki has Sylvie, and I think that's really intense and really immense. Yeah, this. That, this this final episode is going to be great because we're going to see, probably see, I'm assuming we're going to see two parallel stories to where we're going to see Loki and Sylvie crossing over, you know, through uh, Ali, Eliath, uh, Elias. So, there you go. That guy. And and seeing what's on the other side. And then plus we're going to have Mobius doing something at the TVA to either take it down or or go confront Renslayer. Yeah. Wh- whatever it is, it's it's going to be great to see. I, I can't wait. I can't wait for it. I wish it was Wednesday already. And uh, <laughs> uh, so most of my notes we've already talked about. Um, just two of mine that we didn't is uh, that Navy ship that appeared and kind of fought at the 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 storm reminded me a lot of the Philadelphia experiment the, oh yeah an 80s movie with Michael Pere about this ship that disappears and sends guys into the future it's been a long time since I saw it it's so. a great movie though it is it is and I it's based seen it. on supposed true events too yeah it's based on an actual experiment that the Navy tried to do with with making ships invisible or something like that so it was really really cool uh, and then the only other note we had that, that we haven't already talked about was the the return of Hunter B fifteen it was great to see her and I I really was glad to see her alive yeah. uh, being questioned by Renslayer and I love how much she knew about Sylvie's motivation because they had had that connection and I think also because they that not only did they have a connection when Sylvie initially enchanted her but then they had that special connection when they went back to that catastrophe at the Roxacart and she showed her family and she said you know I was happy I had a family and uh, so they had that connection it was great that she knew and I love that interaction between Renslayer and B-15 where B-15 figures out, okay, you're trying to figure this out too, but here's the difference. You want it. She needs it. So mm. that was great. Yeah. And I really do enjoy B-15 too. I, I'm glad that they brought her back. I'm hoping that next episode she plays a pivotal role. Mm-hmm. And I hope she's the one that finds out the truth. Yeah. That way uh, she could present it to them. And it'll be Loki and Sylvie's uh, companion and what they need to do. And, I, you know, that's just going to propel us into uh, the, the multiverse of madness, because that's literally what this, this show is really meant to do, is to... Uh, same thing with WandaVision. WandaVision was the beginning of it. This is kind of the result of it in some way. And then by the time this ends... We get all these what if moments in what if, and then we go into come December of all things, Spider-Man No Way Home, which is the launching of a lot of the Multiverse of Madness itself. And then I think we get Multiverse of Madness after that, too. And that's where it's going to be like everything breaks away. And I'm not saying that because we got to see, you know, Hugh Jackman post a bunch of Instagram things of him with Kevin Feige and then him showing him a a claw and us hoping and praying that we get to see his version of Wolverine, which would be amazing, too, because if we get multi multiple versions of Wolverine and then finally we get a version of Wolverine, I'll be a kid in the candy store. I'll be so happy. I'll be running around like a little kid, like high on chocolate or something. <laughs> but, you know, it, that's literally where we're going with this, and I'm really enjoying this. So what are your notes? Uh, the first one, well, The Void gave me a Land of the Lost vibe throughout the whole thing. The movie version, that is, if you remember what Will Ferrell and uh, Danny McBride, and uh, I've, I'm forgetting the actress, but uh, it was kind of like a, uh, a comedy version of Land of the Lost. But I do enjoy that movie. But y- you get to see a pirate ship. So, you know, and my love of pirates, a UFO, a sphinx, and what looks like to be uh, Asgardian statue heads. On top of that, you know, a large sized yellow jacket helmet in the foreground as well, which references another Marvel product, the Ant-Man movie. So we got to see Yellow Jacket that and maybe there was a battle with Yellow Jacket and he just left his big large helmet there or something. There's uh foreshadowing with also with uh within the comics too, an Easter egg, 
within that as well, where you get Throg, which is the frog version of Thor, and it shows up within a quick scene as it's fading up as you see uh, Classic Loki, Boastful Loki, and Kid Loki, and Our Loki walking away, and... All you see is a little frog jumping up with a helmet on it, like uh, Thor has, and, and a little Mjolnir that's sitting there in the wet, and he can't <laughs> get over the mountain. So I thought that was pretty cool. And that's before they got to their lair of Logies, before they settled down and talked about their uh, little thing. We can also see a head from the Living Tribunal as well within their journey, which is another Easter egg. And there's others in there too, so you have to be really good at, at pausing. <laughs> But uh, I, I, was, I, I kept pausing because I wanted to see so much. I knew there was so much in there, so I had to look. And that, the one with the frog Loki really made me chuckle because within the comic series, they had frog Loki. And it was so funny to see a frog Loki with like a small Mjolnir and the helmet and the cape and everything. That ran for, uh, I think, a few issues, as I recall. It's been so long because that was in the 80s at that point. And I remember having those issues. I think the the issue that the Frog Loki was on, it actually literally had him with the hammer, like the Mjolnir hammer, and him as a frog. And I, I was just like laughing. I had to pause it every time I saw it. Um, next one up uh, would be Kid Loki killed Thor and... That was what brought him to the void, and then, and that was what his Nexus event was. And you could see the shock on Loki's face when he talks about it. And the fact that he never really conceived or thought of killing his own brother. And uh, other than that, uh, Sylvie pruning herself, you, you already talked about this. I didn't think of that, but you know, if you think about it, that was true devotion between her mm -hmm. and finding Loki and getting to that point, because... She kind of used up all her efforts trying to get there, you know. She got consumed with the ruse of this void ship from Miss Minutes and uh, Rensselaer and decided, well, that's the only way really to get into the void itself. Next up would be uh, apparently having daggers is looked down upon by a certain Lokis in that world. <laughs> and I thought that was amazing. Of course, Loki takes a little bit of offense to it, but in the end... He's got a flaming dagger or flaming, like, short sword, uh, you know, which kind of reminded me almost like the Lord of the Rings at certain points. And, uh, I really enjoyed that. It was a good comedic form or format. Miss Minutes coming back only for just a quick cameo with trying to find this quote-unquote void ship that would get them to the void. Uh, I know it was a ruse from Renslayer, but I, I just love the fact that we got more of uh, Tara Strong. A little bit. I, I don't think we're going to see her in the last episode. If we do, it'd be funny. I, it'd be really funny if that were the person behind the curtain. <laughs> the biggest Easter egg known of all, too, to me, would be the Thanos copter from the comics in one of the scenes in the Void. In the comics, Thanos is running from everyone after things were put right, and he's being hunted down by the police, and he's in a helicopter of all things. And yes, we do get to see that helicopter, because it says... Thanos copter on it. <laughs> on the uh, the Avengers building or the Avengers tower, we see Q E N G. That is a uh, another comic Easter egg there that I really enjoyed. And pretty much, if you think about it, and you're probably questioning it, what is that reference to? I'm still thinking about Kang the Conqueror. Yeah, they're dropping they're dropping a lot of hints about Kang from the like the the YouTube videos I said that I watched today. Yeah. They're, they're dropping a lot of hints about Kang, even to the point of of Ravona Renslayer. Correct. Uh, when when they showed her as a Minuteman, and this is uh, this is not me. This I saw on a YouTube video. They paused, and then when she was a Minuteman, her designation was A twenty three, and apparently it was Avengers, Avengers twenty three issue twenty three. Yeah, yeah, where she first appeared. So, and she was a whatever uh, devotee of yeah, Kang. or Kang yeah. was in love with her, or something like that. Yeah, something something weird like that. So they're really dropping a lot of hints, which they that did in WandaVision too. If you think about it, when they talked about Mephisto, so this could be another ruse by Disney Plus or Marvel. Yeah. Just to throw us off track, and for all we know, just like within WandaVision, the answer is right in front of us. It could be something completely, completely different yeah. uh, that 
it's not that. So yeah, of all of all things, we could probably think it's you know Ultron. You know, <laughs> yeah, we haven't seen or heard Ultron, but we didn't see any references about Ultron directly. And for all we know, with the snap, that could have undid something within Ultron, and he, maybe he's able to go through time. And you know, th- think about it with like them not talking about or having robots allowed within the TVA and what was really in control of the TVA or were considered the timekeepers. They were robots, right? Th- they were kind of cheesy robots, but think about it. It could be Ultron for all we know. It could be Ultron all along. Um, <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, th- those were my thoughts, and I thought it was cool just to bring up all the Easter eggs, and I thought it would be so fun. And those are just my thoughts. You know, everybody will have their own, but we won't know until that very end, that last episode that we're going to get next week, and I can't wait for that to come. All right, well, we can move right along, go right into quotes. Okay. Um, you want me to start? Sure. Uh, the first one I've got is, <laughs> it's just, I think all of mine are, are from the, the time in the void because it was great. The, uh, uh, Loki says, okay, fine, willing to accept that after classic Loki tells him that the alligator is a Loki variant. He's just like, <laughs> okay, fine, willing to accept that. <laughs> yeah. One for me would be classic Loki to our Loki saying, this is the void. That's Elioth and we're his lunch. Come on. <laughs> and that was like the very first line within the episode too. And yeah, that was, it was after great. Loki was like, "Where am I? Where is this? What are we doing here?" And yeah, it was great. Yeah. Uh, so my my next one is uh, is from Morbius when he's in the car with with uh, Sylvie and she says she wants him to turn around and go back to uh, that monster, and he <laughs> he just says, "Turn around. You want to go back to the angry cloud?" So, <laughs> when she had just been the one saying, "Let's get away from it." Uh, next up for me would be Renslayer to Sylvie explains the uh, pruning and where they go. And this is what she states. The dogma states that the end of time is still being written at the, that the timekeepers are recreating everything for Utopia. Very good. My last one is Loki when he's introducing the other Lokis to, to Sylvie. He says, us as a child, us in the future, us as an alligator. Best not to question it. <laughs> yep. <laughs> yeah. And the last one for me would be uh, Classic Loki stating, we're broken, every version of us. And that was after the scuffle with, uh, I guess you would call him President Loki and his other faction of Lokis that that just uh, got into their little lair that they have and before the fight, or actually after the fight at that point. Yeah, yeah, it it was uh, a a fun-filled episode, a lot of visual, the effects were really good, I really enjoyed it. I had a great time watching it. I watched it three times, and you know, I'm pretty sure I'm leaving out a lot, but I'm sure that a lot of you listeners are probably just as fans as we are and are going to be looking at it a few more times trying to figure out what's going on, because there's not much that we could really go into. You know, I already said it, and it's like, you know, even Steve said it, when you look at a lot of the YouTubes, and just like me, everybody else is thinking Kang the Conqueror, and I mentioned that too before, I'm like, is this kind of mm-hmm. a Kang thing, and a lot of people are starting to speculate maybe Doctor Doom, but it's too soon at this point because they're not really working on the idea of putting out a Fantastic Four right away, though Kang does live in that realm too, but they could change that up for the cinematic, or uh, the MCU, or Disney Plus series that works within the MCU itself, so they could create Kang to be somebody a little bit different, but we won't know until that particular episode drops. So just like you, we're all speculating, we're all having fun with this, and enjoying what we're getting within the content, and we're all anticipating next week's episode just like you are. So with that, that that's pretty much our uh, thought on uh, this particular episode of Loki, and uh, we did actually get a little bit of feedback and that was through Facebook. And that was through uh, Pat Johnson. Or is it Johnston? <laughs> I think it's Johnston, but I don't, I think it is. So, yeah. so Pat states, uh, a bit behind, so I just started with uh, the Loki episodes. Bonus points to Steve for the news radio reference. <laughs> <laughs> I had to, sh- I had to, that was so many episodes ago. I had to rack my brain and I was like, oh, the D.D. Cooper thing. So, yep. yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, thank you. I appreciate that, Pat. I, uh, like I said, I, I saw that. And I went, huh? And I was, oh, yeah, the D.D. Cooper thing. So, <laughs> on a little bit of comic news, well, uh, 
you know, Free Comic Book Day kind of came and went real by quick this year. They didn't have really an official day where we could all go in and get our comics. Uh, well, my comic shops didn't at that, but when I was able to drop in today and pick up my pull list, and it's been a while, I was able to snag a copy of The Boys 1 for Free Comic Book Day. And uh, this one is As Seen on Prime. And this is like basically the first I issue. And you get that free with your comic shop if they still have it or they got it. Mine still had it around. They still had a ton of copies. And uh, I snagged it. I read it quite quick. And oh my God, because usually the, the free comic book day comics go kind of quick as far as like with the writing and the comic itself. But I really enjoyed it. And oh my goodness, the darkness within it, just like the actual Amazon Prime show and just as bloody. So I enjoyed that. Uh, I have it, I've yet to read it, and that would be Skybound X, and that would be the first issue of it, and it's Beyond the Walking Dead, Rick Grimes 2000. So this is supposed to be Rick Grimes in the future, it's like an alternate version of Rick Grimes, but in the future, and he deals with zombies and everything else, they have new stories from Clementine, Manifest Destiny, and Ultra Mega. I've yet to jump in and read this. Uh, it's something I really want to savor and read a couple of times over, but I didn't really want to do it right away. But it was amazing to find this, and I was like, oh, okay. And then you got the regular Walking Dead, and they are releasing those now as a uh, color copy. So I got a bunch of those. So I haven't been there in a while. But, you know, that's something to look forward to. And as we are recording this, this is the eve of just before Black Widow comes out. Derek and John from TV Podcast Industries were able to go see Black Widow. They're in the future because they're in Ireland, so they're a day ahead. <laughs> and they uh, they got to see it. He didn't want to say anything. I really wanted to ask him a badger room about it. And he's like, just go see it for yourself, pal. So um, my, my feeling is just the same. I'm going to go see it. I will definitely be getting it on Disney+, Plus, but you have to pay that $30 price for that rental fee, but that's because we're going to be covering it, and I really want to watch it a few times. So my suggestion, if you really don't want to go to the theater, Disney+, Plus is releasing that same day. So if you're in America and are in the past and you're not in Ireland, just like <laughs> John and Derek are, and they were able to go to see it a, a day or two earlier. I think they had press releases or, or something to go see at press passes. But lucky them, you know, to me, I would, you know, jump at that heartbeat, uh, jump on the heartbeat just to get there to see it. So I'm going to be going to the movies tomorrow and seeing that in the theater, and then I will be coming back. I'll be renting it, and I'll be making notes, so that way we can give you guys a little review. And if you have any thoughts on it, we're going to throw something in our Facebook page, like a, an image, and then ask you to put your comments below, or email us that, and we'll get that into how to send in your feedback as well. So right now, we're just going to move right along into podcast recommendations. So Steve, what do you got? Uh, Strange Indeed on the Podcastica Network. Uh, Pake and Rima are covering Lisey's story, which is on Apple TV+. Plus. I'm loving it. I'm sending the voicemails almost every episode. I think I missed one because I was sick. But uh, other than that, they are doing really good on covering Lisey's story, which if you're – wow. If you're a fan of Stephen King, uh, I, think you'd, I think you'd like the show. So check it out. Yeah, definitely. Check them out. I've been watching Lisey's story as far as me trying to – follow along with that oh my god it's very hard i never read the book but it's so i'm not gonna say convoluted but there's so much involved within the story i guess you had to read the book or the story itself by stephen king himself in order to know it but seeing it from an outsider just watching the episodes it, it's a lot to swallow it's a lot to take in. I do enjoy the show, and I, I suggest if you guys have read the story or have been following the story on Apple TV, listen along. It's fun to listen to them. And uh, for my recommendations, well, obviously July 4th has passed, but Run For Your Lives has actually just released a uh, the movie Independence Day review, and they've had uh, Next Level Ben himself 
on and i really enjoyed that particular episode i just love how ben comes in and just <laughs> keeps talking about it was, Ar- it was uh, good armageddon <laughs> yeah it was good <laughs> and i i really enjoyed that and then i think at one point something got brought up about you know because they were talking roland emmerich and dean devlin and uh, i'm not a huge fan of the godzilla 98 everybody knows me knows that i call it gino which is godzilla in name only and yeah, you know, I'm not bagging on it. You know, if you enjoy that movie, fine. But to me, being a Godzilla fan, or a true Godzilla fan, as it were, that's Godzilla name only. But if they really want to do that battle royale between me and Ben, we could do that. It's fun to do. Um, I have my feelings about it. And uh, Hiro Nakajima and Ken Pachira Satsuma both walked out of the, the viewing of that film, too, by the way. I heard about that at a Godzilla convention. And when I heard that through the uh, translator, I started laughing my ass off. But you listen to them on uh, Run For Your Lives on the Pyrocore Entertainment Network. And Ben Beck shows up. And he has a good time talking about ID4 or Independence Day. And I really enjoyed it. I had a good time. It was like, you know, listening to them, it is just fun. On top of that, I would highly recommend uh, Did You Get My Text with Meredith Salinger and Patton Oswalt. And they have their own. It's I've mentioned it before. They're pretty much just a celebrity married couple. And Patton, as you know, came from King of Queens, has his own comedy routine. Meredith was Natty Gann. She was in a uh, the Two Corys movie, which is I'm forgetting the name of the damn movie at this point. But regardless, uh, you will remember her from TV and film. I kind of made a mistake. I thought she was in Punisher, but no, she was in Daredevil season three, and I made that mistake when I sent in some feedback, voice voicemail feedback. But they have a good time. And it's literally just them texting throughout the day, you know, being a married couple and about things about their day. And they have fun with it. So I highly recommend them as well. And for YouTube recommendations, the only thing I could think of would be the thing with two heads. And that would be with Sean Clark and Christopher Nelson. And Chris is an effects artist that's in Hollywood. And they're really good friends. Uh, Sean is pretty much a manager to the celebrities, as uh, I like to call him, when they do conventions. So they have a really good time. They talk about just in general horror things that are out there, things that are new, all these cool things. And then they have like live shows themselves and have a good time. And uh, they talk about new movies, things that are going on within the world of film. And they're really interesting people. I really enjoy them. So check them out if you can. And that's the thing with two heads. They also have a podcast as well. So very cool. Yeah. Uh, the only thing I've got is I think Screen Crush and Eric Voss were the two main ones that I looked at uh, YouTube videos today. So you can check those guys out. They've got Easter egg videos of galore out there. So for for us, we would love to have a review. You, you, if you're hearing us on your podcast player of choice, whichever one that is, Spotify, Google Play, Apple Podcasts, or whichever one you use, whatever it is out there, if they can give us, if you can give us a review, please do that. Uh, give us a five star review. Uh, say something nice. We'd really, really appreciate that. You can also check out our website, which is panels to That will link you straight to our Facebook group, which is facebook.com slash panels to pixels and that's where you can leave us a, a post there tell us uh, how you're how we're doing tell us what you thought about the the episode that we're covering or movie or whatever you can also email us at panels to pixels one at gmail.com that's panels to pixels one the to spelled out right in the middle and the number one at gmail.com we're also on youtube as panels to pixels podcast so go in there you can subscribe to us give us a thumbs up and uh, we'd love to hear your comments on there as well. Next week, we will be covering the final episode of season one, hopefully season one, hopefully we get a season two, if not, no big, <laughs> of Loki. We have no idea what it's called. We don't have a synopsis for it. We just know that it's going to be good. Yes, definitely. And where else can listeners hear us? Well, I could be heard on the Adrenaline Cinema podcast on the Pyrocore Entertainment Network. And there we cover action films, adventure films, suspense films, and thriller films. So we just wrapped up, and I just released it last week, just before or after the last podcast you got from us here on Panels to Pixels. Pake and I covered 
the movie Baby Driver. And Steve had sent in some uh, voicemail, too, with that. So you could check that out next week. I'm not sure exactly what's going on. Uh, I thought I would be doing The Hunt for Red October, but Greg's gone, going on vacation, so I might do Atomic Blonde with Wendy, if she's available, or John Wick too. So we'll notify you and let you know exactly what's going on. So just keep in mind, just check out the Facebook page, Adrenaline Cinema Podcast, and you'll be aware of what's going on. Or just check here on our Facebook page, and uh, we'll keep you apprised of what's going on there. And you can hear me. I send voicemails to various other podcasts that our friends do. And I just, I, I love to do that. And I appreciate all of our friends' podcasts. Yeah, he likes the live Steve a lot. I do. <laughs> <laughs> and it's pretty cool, too, because it's very different for every show and very ep- every movie that he does it for, too, or show. It's it's fun. I just sent one. I can't wait until, the, I think they're releasing it this week, Run For Your Lives. You already mentioned them. Mm-hmm. Uh, they're going to do Eight-Legged Freaks. Oh, and yeah. And I, uh, I did, I live seed that because I hadn't seen it. I don't think I ever, I thought I had seen it before, but I don't think I ever had. So that was my, it's, that's the best way to live see something is, is brand new. Oh, especially since, too, that that movie is very humorous. <laughs> and it's kind of out of the ordinary, you know, especially when that big spider goes into the wall and goes after the cat. <laughs> I love that. It looked like something out of a Tom and Jerry movie. Exactly. So uh, if you guys are really into that kind of thing, I really do suggest uh, Run For Your Lives. And do check out Eight-Legged Freaks, the movie, if you've never seen it before. It's very humorous. You got uh, David Arquette, Carrie Wurr, uh, Young Scarlett Johansson. And it's, think of, like, mutated spiders that just go crazy on a small town. I can't wait to really, you know, I look forward to them covering it and hearing what their takes are on it. Because I really enjoyed that movie when it came out. I just laugh at it and I love it. It's one of those movies, it's like those guilty pleasure movies that you have to watch. And I'm coining a phrase straight out of adrenaline cinema. So, (laughs) So with that, we'll just move on. And I just want to thank everybody for listening. It was great doing this podcast. And I love the fact that you guys are enjoying our podcast because I had a listener recently tell me that. So I just want to thank all you guys for listening. I'm Mark. And I'm Steve. And this was Panels to Pixels. And we'll see you on the next panel. Good night, everybody. Good night. Good night.